Territory was known for its traditions. That was why families sent their children there. A musician trained there was consistent, steady, reliable, ready to pass traditions on to a new generation of listeners and students alike, whether anyone wanted it or not. Tasabin had hated almost every moment of it. There had never been any question about where she would be sent. There hadn't even been any question about what instrument she'd play. Her brothers had forged the path ahead of her, and all she had to do was follow along. There was never any question of her doing something so bold as leading. She simply didn't have the talent for it. She was good enough, and off-world, she might even make a living as a soloist somewhere that didn't know any better. But Desabin had known for her entire life that she was never going to be in the front row of any orchestra. And now she waited in a small room, staring down an empty chair across an unremarkable table. She had been sent there by the proctor droid, barely thinking about the unfamiliar room number, expecting to find out how she'd done on her finals. Instead, a dark room and an endless seeming wait. Tasabin had made it as far as she had by hiding her true feelings from everyone, and she wasn't about to crack now, not even for outdated bureaucracy. The door finally opened, really swinging on real hinges, because that was the sort of place the Thede Conservatory was, and Tasabin straightened in the chair. Even if it was only the droid, it was important to be ready. Conservatory droids were known to monitor students' posture and bearing, keeping track of who was the best at looking like a musician, as well as performing mundane tasks. But the person in the doorway was not a droid. Tosabin took a deep breath, without giving any appearance of doing so. Another benefit of a conservatory education. He was taller than she was, which wasn't saying a lot. It was a place to start, though. He wore the blue and maroon of the Naboo Royal Security Forces, his hat tucked under his arm since he was inside. He had short cropped hair and dark brown skin, and his eyes were almost warm, except that something around the edge of him prevented that measure of relaxation. He took the other seat without introducing himself, and placed the hat on the table between them. If the security officer were hoping to rattle her, he'd picked the wrong day for it. Exams were over, and Tasabin had gotten a full night's sleep for the first time in weeks. Her family had all been in touch with her that morning. Her brothers had reassured her that everything would be fine, and her parents had let her know where they could be reached when her results were in. She knew she hadn't done anything to merit this visit, so it must be a curiosity. It must be something he wanted from her. So Tasabin looked at him calmly, every wall she'd ever built shielding her from him. After several long minutes, the ghost of a smile appeared on his lips, and he stretched a hand across the table toward her, palm up. Quash Panaka, he said. Royal Security Forces. But I assume you could tell that for yourself. Tisabin, she replied, politely shaking his hand. Yes. He let her go, and she returned her hands to her lap. He folded his on the table and looked at her. How do you feel about the election? he asked. Tasabin raised an eyebrow in spite of herself. She had not expected that question. I am not required to tell you, she replied. That's true, he said, and almost laughed. You will at least confirm that you are aware of the candidates? Of course, she said. This is the first year I get to vote. You're thirteen, he said. He leaned back in his chair without losing any sense of being on guard. I'll be fourteen by then, she told him. You must have at least discovered my birthday before you came in here. I did, he said. He tapped his fingers on the tabletop. Tasabin was starting to get annoyed. Yes, it was the first day of the rest of her life, at least in theory, given that her formal education was all but finished and she didn't exactly have plans, but she also didn't want to waste the day in this room with this man. Your teachers say you are diligent, Panaka said. You are never late, 
You are scrupulous when it comes to performance.